Let's talk about algae on the glass. It grows and builds up day after day, and it requires us to clean it off. This is completely normal in a reef tank. It happens in public aquariums, it happens in fish stores, and it happens in your tank at home. So when you see this, usually it's because there's phosphate in the water, nitrate, nutrients, and of course, lighting. These are the things that grow algae, and it's our job to clean it off. It does not mean that your tank has a problem or that you're doing something wrong. It's just part of our normal daily maintenance. Are you a failure as a reef keeper? Let's hear what this guy thought. I never thought I'd have this problem. I got the biggest skimmer I could buy. I changed my water. I did all the things they told me to do. I got an RODI system. And yet, I have phosphates. It was hard to admit. I mean, they just see the tank, they see the fish. First, all I did was mix up a new batch of salt water and test that. Then I could post a picture. It looked like my water was great, but I knew it wasn't. I just want a solution. There's got to be something out there that works. I've tried every kind of GFO. I tried them for months and months with zero good results. Listing a bunch of names, it's just going to be rattling off names. It's all the name brands you've heard of. But no matter how much I had on the system, my phosphates were measuring over 3.0. It's even hard to admit to myself. Well, I didn't even know it was a problem at first because I didn't test for phosphates. It wasn't even important. I just thought I could feed the tank and skim the water and everything would be great. But the algae kept coming back. It was on the glass. It was on the rocks. It was even showing up on the sand bed. I had to buy a test kit and test my water. I thought the kit was wrong. My fish were happy. They were fat. They loved nori. I would always clean the glass right before someone showed up. But within a few hours, it was turning green and then brown. I'm ashamed. I just want a solution. There has to be. There's got to be something out there that will do this. So how hard is it to use Phosphate RX? It's actually really, really simple. You can get the product itself and you can add this 10 micron sock, which is a four inch sock. They also come in a seven inch size, if you like. And that way it'll catch the particulates that this creates within a matter of a couple of hours. The instructions for Phosphate RX are six drops per 10 gallons of water. So if you had a 100 gallon tank, you'd need 60 drops. This bottle treats a thousand gallons. Uh, that means you can have 10 doses in one bottle if you had a 100 gallon aquarium, which is way more than you'd ever use in a year. So it's actually very economical to use. The recommendation is to not lower phosphates more than 0.5 ppm in a 24 hour period, but I've done way, way worse over the years and nothing bad happened to my tank. Uh, you've seen my corals and my fish for, well, 10 years or longer, and they have been through phosphate erects many, many, many times. The anemones, they may close up for a day or two in response, but I've had people email me and say, what about starfish? What about butterflies? What about, you know, they list, list all these animals. Everything you see in my reef has been through Phosphate RX. So if you can find that animal in my tank, it's gonna be totally fine. I actually like using it because I put it in in one night and I'm done for the next six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, until the number comes up again. And then at that point, I'll treat again. So how high a number do I wait till? 0.25 PPM, 0.5. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be zero. Matter of fact, I'm not even looking to hit absolute zero. 
But by treating with Phosphate RX, you get it all the way down to that zero range overnight, and then you're right back in business. So I took out two minutes out of my life to go ahead and test the water. I knew the phosphates were up on the tank because I was getting more of the film algae on the glass. The higher the phosphates, the more brown that film algae is. But it's been a green sheen, and so it was getting there. I just checked right now with my ELOS test kit. It's basically one part per million. 1.0, yeah, it's up there. And yet everything's alive. I know everyone's so worried about phosphates, but that really has never been a concern of mine because I knew I could knock it back down. And I guess you could just say my reef lives in spite of me because I don't always uh, treat her as good as I should. I just do the best I can with the schedule I, I run. And uh, so I just check now. Again, I'll check again tomorrow, and I know they'll be cut in half, if not more. I did a total of 180 drops this time, which is actually just kind of a number I pick. I'm not actually trying to hit a specific number. My liquid volume of my reef and my anemone cube combined with the sump, taking out the sand and rock, and the inner uh, size of the tank, because when they give you a tank, they give you external dimensions. My total water volume is about 450 gallons. So 45 times six is how much I should be treating, but I don't do that. I do about 180 drops or 130, whatever my mood is. And I put that in, knock them down some, and usually I get them down to where they're around 0 0.03, 0 0.1 maybe, and they float around there. And in the past, I would pretty much dose about five times a year, about every 10 weeks. I'm dosing a little bit more, so clearly I am feeding a little bit more. But I do have about 55 or 60 fish in the system. I've got all the tangs. I've got a lot of clownfish combined with the two tanks. And, you know, the corals themselves, they don't add phosphate to the water that I'm aware of. It's really the fish, you know, because I, I like to keep them well fed. I like them fat and happy. For those of you that are worried about dropping phosphates too quickly, I'm going to tell you, yes, they warn you not to do that, but I have done it many times with no adverse effects. Bottom line is, I've had an auto feeder go crazy and drop a month's worth of food in my tank overnight, and I came back from a trip and my phosphates were 3.0. I treated the tank every other day. I put in phosphate RX on Monday, on Wednesday, on Friday, on Sunday again, for about 10 days to two weeks until phosphates were measuring right at zero or 0 0.03 ppm. If you want to go slower, if you want to dose less, you can, but if there was a risk with this product, I would tell you. I literally have had no concerns with it at all. I didn't invent it, I just love it, and that's why I sell it. After you've treated with Phosphate RX, you're done. The next day, clean out your skimmer. That means clean out the cup and the neck, make sure it's nice and tidied up. You'll actually see the skimmate is a different color. It's gonna be more whitish. Because what's actually happening is when the product hits the water, and some people say, what is the product? It's lanthanum chloride, but it's concentrated. And it's mixed up the exact way it needs to be for your tank. I know some people go to a pool supply and they buy their own powders and they mix it up. And then everyone warns, be very careful with lanthanum chloride. I never hear that with be very careful with phosphate RX. They're always talking about the ingredient, not the product from Blue Life. So don't fear this product because it works great. And I have not had anything bad happen, like I mentioned before. You don't have to change water when you're done. You don't have to do anything special. You can clean your glass like you normally do with a, with a cleaning magnet, with a magic eraser, whatever you normally use, a credit card. You might see some light, uh, some light white film on there. That's fine. But it'll be all completely gone. Because what happened was when the product hit the water, it turned the phosphate in the water into a solid. And it's called a flocculent. And a flocculant just means there's flakes of phosphate blowing around. So a protein skimmer will pull it out. The filter sock will pull it out as well. So if you want to go with that route, or if you're running a, a tank that's in a business, it has to be crystal clear at all times, running that 10 micron sock will be a great thing to use because you're able to treat and keep the tank's cloudiness to a minimum, or the treatment will last just an hour or two instead of being overnight. Me, I like to treat the tank overnight while the fish are asleep. So the first thing I do when I install a sock is I change the plumbing under my tank to move from the bubble tower into the filter sock. And then I go ahead and I dose directly into the skimmer section of my sump. You can dose into the sock itself if you want. I just don't see the point with that many drops into such a small puddle of water. I think that it might just clog up the sock super fast as it flocculates. I tried to find out if there was a better time of day to do it. Does it matter to the fish if they're swimming through this stuff? Or is it better 
when the fish are asleep. And my concern, of course, is, well, if this stuff's in the water, will it clog up their gills and make it hard for them to breathe? Will they suffocate? I've never lost any fish while treating my tank with phosphate RX. So I don't think that you should have to be worried about that. And I also don't know that there's any proof one way or another that daytime versus nighttime is better. I just like to do it at night while the fish are sleeping, tucked in their little hidey holes, and the next day the water's crystal clear again because my skimmer took it all out. And if you used a sock, the sock would have taken it out. And the next day you can test your water again and you'll find out that your phosphates are completely gone. When you dose this product, what you'll see is the water becomes cloudier and cloudier. Uh, the higher the phosphate level in your tank, the more cloudy it will be based on the concentration of the product you dose to your tank. I'm used to seeing this slightly milky looking water when I treat the tank. Uh, when the phosphate was really high in the system, I had it a little thicker, but it was still something you could see through. It didn't become super crazy opaque. The corals themselves, they stay the same. I don't see any stress responses whatsoever from LPS or SPS corals. I've never seen a clam suffer from this. I've never seen anemones. Nothing specifically changes. It pretty much everything's just normal operations. It just looks a little weird. Even the fish continue to swim around as normal. As you can see, this filter sock is filling up with all kinds of bubbles and of course is clogging up the material as it tries to exit through the pores. Just a quick follow-up to give you the results from last night's dosing. Within a couple of hours, the water was nice and clear because I used that filter sock, and you guys know I hate socks. So now it's on the floor waiting for me to clean it. Uh, the phosphates measured 0.25 with an ELOS test kit. I also measured with a HANA checker twice because I'm doing a product review on their equipment, and it came out to 0.31. So not bad for dosing only 180 drops when I probably should have dosed 280. Remember, if it's 6 drops per 10 gallons to drop your phosphates 0.5 ppm, if your tank is 0.25 ppm, you'd only need 3 drops per 10 gallons, which means the bottle would last even longer. I mentioned earlier that a bottle treats 1,000 gallons. Uh, it contains 600 drops. One thing I did want to mention is that when you're using the bottle and you're squeezing it out, as you squeeze it, it may stop. And whenever that has happened in the past, I would go ahead and I would take the bottle and invert it so the nozzle is pointed up and I would tap it two or three times and then flip it back over to resume. I don't want to squeeze it so hard that I force the tip to burst out and dump all the liquid in my tank. So keep that in mind. If for some reason you ran into that, it's rare, but it is a, a very simple workaround if you encounter that situation. Can you use it as a maintenance dose? Sure. You can determine what your tank needs on a regular basis and you can put in those amount of drops once a week or once a month. I choose to dose only as needed. That's why I talk about dosing every eight weeks or every 10 weeks, which comes out to about five times a year. It's something that's worked for me for a very long time and I'm really surprised more people haven't embraced it because it's so much less work than setting up a reactor, rinsing out the GFO, making sure the GFO is tumbling, replacing the GFO, which is expensive over time. And that's what's involved in dosing phosphate RX. Super easy, economical. Did I mention it's easy? <laughs> I think those with an all-in-one tank, the nano systems might have a little bit more of a challenge if they wanted to use this. It probably would work fine. And I would definitely recommend doing it overnight with a canister filter to capture the flocculent. If you can do that, I think that you can use it just as much as all of us with tanks that have sumps beneath. Thank you for watching, happy reefing, and I'll see you guys real soon.